Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good Wednesday afternoon on Victoria Hill in for Andrea Lutz. Welcome to the new news. Coming up, help with drug addiction is just a call away. We'll explain the Montana Angel Initiative, but first. Montana's law forbidding businesses from requiring their employees to be vaccinated will stand. The law is the only one of its kind in the nation. The Sydney law firm filed suit last October to invalidate the law. It said the law is an unconstitutional infringement on its right to keep its workplace and employees safe. But a district judge in Glendive rejected the firm's request to block the law. In doing so, the judge also said it's unlikely the lawsuit will succeed on its merits. There is a separate lawsuit challenging the law in federal court. Recreational marijuana has been legal for just one month in Montana, but it's already generated $3 million in tax revenue for the state. Total sales topped $22.6 million. Here's how the state plans to use the money it makes from marijuana this year. $6 million will go to substance abuse prevention and mental health treatment programs. Veteran and crisis treatment programs will get a combined $350,000, and the remainder of the tax dollars will go into the state general fund. The blockade of trucks at the U.S.-Canada border continues this morning. MTN's Lindsay Stinger spoke with truckers stuck in Montana trying to get across the border. Canadian truckers are protesting COVID-19 mandates, but this Canadian protest is leaving truckers stuck in Montana with no clue of when they'll be able to go home. No, we're stuck because, well, we have our freight that's going to California. So that makes it a bit hard for us right now. It has now been several days since the Canadian border in Sweetgrass has closed its ports. Truckers have found refuge alongside the road in a nearby truck stop and even the small town of Shelby. I've been here since uh, 6 o'clock Sunday night. It kind of sucks, but we're getting low on it, but Shelby's not too far if need be. With all different thoughts and feelings on the protests, but all with the same prerogative. Just trying to go home. Two of the truckers that are stuck at the Sweetgrass entrance are independent truckers who have lost what they estimate to be over $1,300 per day. I'm an owner-operator, well. and so is Rob. He's an owner-operator too. Yeah, we don't get paid. There's a guy with that big reel and the orange truck over there. He's owner-operator too. He's not. We're not getting paid. We're out revenue. We should have unloaded on Monday morning and reloaded and been back south already, but that's not going to happen. Some are out immediate revenue, and for those with perishable goods, it's a race against time. Uh, it's expired, then uh, we're here even longer because we can't even leave that until that opens up and we can go back because we're not allowed to enter, obviously. With no end in sight, many truckers are losing patience. I've been through a couple truck strikes through the course of my career, but uh, this is the first time I've been held up like this where I'm basically hostage to get back into my own country and be able to go home. In Toole County, Lindsay Stinger. All I want to do is uh, go out and make a living. MTN News. Happy Groundhog Day, everybody. If you missed it, Puxatani Phil did see his shadow this morning. Six more weeks of winter, and it's going to feel like winter all day today. Our coldest day of the week is that cold Arctic air from the north, just blanketing the area, digging in but will start to retreat as we move forward. Look at those highs today. Now, we'll uh, mention the wind chills. A lot of us not getting above zero. In fact, in the northeast corner of the state, we've seen uh, wind chills approaching 40 below. So all around the region, down in northern Wyoming as well, one of those days where you want to stay indoors. Uh, if you have to go outside, keep yourself bundled up. Just limit your time outside. But there is that system, there's that front that will retreat as we move forward to allow us to warm up. We'll have a full forecast coming up. I'm standing here at the entrance of the Lewis and Clark County Detention Center. Starting this week, eligible people struggling with drug addiction can come here, pick up this phone, and get connected with treatment resources without fear of legal consequences. There has never been this opportunity to do this. It's brand new. It takes me a little bit to think about that. But if it starts people to get out of the addiction cyclone and into treatment, I am happy. On Tuesday, Lewis and Clark County Sheriff Leo Dutton and Governor Greg Gianforte met in Helena to announce the launch of the Montana Angel Initiative in this county. Our shared hope, of course, is that this initiative will save lives, uh, and I'm, I'm confident that it will. 
When someone comes in and asks to take part in the program, a detention officer will work with them, taking any drugs they have with them and contacting the treatment provider. If it's in town, we'll probably just give them a ride. What an opportunity to get somebody to treatment. Right now, the main partner in Lewis and Clark County will be the Helena Indian Alliance. Leaders say they're open to serve anyone in the community. We will get the clients need they, the help they need without fear of legal involvement. This launch comes weeks after a string of around 10 overdoses in Lewis and Clark County and a smaller spike in the Flathead. Lewis and Clark County is the second to officially begin the ANGEL initiative. It first launched in Cascade County in November. About 18 additional sheriff's offices have committed to take part once they complete training. Not everyone will be eligible for the ANGEL initiative. It's not open to those with outstanding warrants and people with large amounts of drugs. People also have to come in on their own to get the opportunity. It's going to take courage on the part of the individual, but we can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different outcome. So this is a new tool that's available to help people get treatment. Dutton says for now, people wanting to participate in the ANGEL initiative can just use this phone here. But in the coming days, the Sheriff's Office is planning to install a separate phone specifically for the ANGEL initiative. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News.